Today we're going to look at exercises in algebra being systematically arranged and adapted to the gradual progress of young pupils in academies and schools, with a key, for the use of the teacher, by Francis J. Grund. 1833. All right, let's have a look. Preface. Now, okay, so let me first say this, as you can see, this preface has those long sentences. So ready, deep breath. The want of a suitable book to exercise the learner in algebra and the rules which are essential to a proper understanding of the other branches of mathematics and which shall at the same time enable him to solve with facility such questions as occur most frequently in the various transactions of common life must have been felt long ago by every experienced teacher of mathematics. To satisfy teachers in this respect, and in order to afford to those who are studying without a teacher the means of practice in this department of mathematical science, the author, advised by friends, who are much better judges than himself, offered to the public a collection of algebraic problems and formulae translated from the celebrated collection of Meyer Hirsch. But this work, though excellent of its kind, is not sufficiently elementary for young beginners and it is on this account the author submits to the consideration of teachers generally the present collection of algebraic exercises. They contain principally such sums and problems as have an immediate bearing on what is wanted for admission into most American colleges. They are, it is believed, systematically arranged and follow each other in such regular gradations as will enable the learner, with very little assistance from the teacher, to work his own way. They do not go further than equations of the second degree, but contain, it is believed, an unusual variety of examples in the preceding rules and hints to the pupils for solving the more difficult ones among them. No answers are given in the book because a key for the use of the teacher accompanies the work and contains besides the answers the statement of the equations of the most difficult problems. Those that wish to proceed farther in algebra, we refer to the problems of Meyer Hirsch published by Carter Hindi and Co. in Boston. If the present collection of algebraic problems should prove acceptable, the author intends to have it followed by exercises in geometry and trigonometry which will be executed on the same plan and be a companion to this work. A collection of arithmetical exercises is already in press and will be published in a few weeks. So, all right, thoughts on this. Well, first of all, they are talking about entrance exams for colleges. There were no, as far as I know, no standardized tes tests at this time. The SAT and ACT came later. Second of all, they, so at the top of this page, very little assistance from the teacher. This situation we're in right now where people are having to do a lot of self-teaching, you know, that's not new. The public school system was somewhat sparser in the 1830s than it is now. Not everybody had access to the same level of education, and sometimes, you know, that was a financial issue. You couldn't pay for it, and not so much a geographical one in that it wasn't near you. So, the idea that there would be books, and you'd like, oh, let's learn algebra from this book. Let's learn other things, Latin or whatever, from this book and then find a college and say, hi, I'm here and I'd like to apply to your college, give me the test. It's kind of how it worked in some cases. Like you hear these inspirational stories of someone who walked over, you know, 200 miles through the wilderness to go to college <laughs> back in the 1800s. That sort of thing seems to have happened, or at least people liked to say it did. Okay, we have errata, so we seem to have rushed the book to print somewhat. So, for example, page 8, first line from above, read 10 BC instead of 1 BC. So, it, it's printing errors. It's just a lack of proofreading. 
Okay, table of contents. We're going up to logarithms. Simple equations, quadratic equations, yay. So simple quantities, we're just adding algebraic things like number one here, a plus a is 2a. Uh, you know, a minus b would actually be a minus b. Look at number 10. Some of these are combining like terms sort of problems. So... You know, 14 is, you know, negative 12a. a plus 3a plus 2a equals what? That would be, what, 6a? 2a plus 4b minus 7c plus 3a plus 7c equals what? See, here, here's a combining like terms one, so it's, let's get the, uh, so it's 5a. There aren't any b's after this one. So it's 5a plus 4b, and that's it, because it's minus 7c and plus 7c. And then this kind of stuff. I like the gaps. That's actually handy. It's a good, uh, a good technique for combining like terms, like I've, I've told my own students in the past to, to do more or less this. Same thing. From 6a, subtract negative 5a. So, 11a. More of that kind of thing. Multiplication of simple quantities. Ooh, a times b equals what? Well, so, a times b equals what? a times b, really. It's just you'd put a, b. What else? Okay, so extra long notation here, definitely extra long. Look at number 29 in the middle of the page. 3AAA plus 5ABB plus 4BBB plus 4, or I'm sorry, times 4AAA minus 5ABBB plus 4BBB equals what? So... I'm going to have to do a little more research to find out when exponents became a thing, but clearly not yet. I don't think there was a single exponent. Yeah, I don't see a single exponent here, even where it's only squared, like in number 26, 7BB. So this kind of thing. It's just a list of problems. Find the first term and remainder of the division. They're using a colon for division, apparently. So that's interesting, because if you think about it, the actual division sign it looks like a dash between the dots of a colon. So you've got... powers. Oh, okay, so I was wrong. Look, we're using exponents now. How many factors x are contained in x to the 14th power? Well, it's 14. Of how many factors b does the 15th power of b consist? Again, 15, that's what powers mean. x times x times x equals what power of x? x to the third power, okay. So this is like Algebra 1 stuff. To what fraction is 4 to the minus 1 equal? 1 over 4. To what fraction is uh, 2 to the minus 2 equal? Also 1 fourth because it's 1 over 2 squared. Addition of compound quantities. Yeah, so this is just practice, really. A lot of just drill and practice. So I guess, you know, in 1830s America or England, you know, rise and grind culture would have been. Well, it seems to me that in the interests of attending the university or college to which I hope to gain ad <laughs> admission. Wow. I shall proceed with my daily algebra practice. Oh goodness. Nested parentheses here. <laughs> A squared to the third to the fourth to the fifth equals what? 
So common denominator stuff. Okay. I always, you know, I like word problems a lot. This is interesting in its way, especially for notation's sake. But I think the real action is where you start to see word problems. Oh, goodness. Square roots. Here we're assuming that they uh, have taught the algorithm for doing that in some other text. So, big, weird typeset radicals here. The typesetting's not quite to where you can have a vinculum over the stuff that we're taking the square root of, so you have to do this big checkmark looking guy and then large square brackets. What else do we have? Cube roots, fourth roots. Doing operations with same. Goodness. All right, look at all this. Whoa, giant curly brace. <laughs> I love this typesetting because why would you do it this way instead of just have a header? Write with fractional exponents and then list the quantities to do. I don't know. So wild. That's, the, that, that's my favorite. That's why I still do this, is because it's so wild to see these combinations of stuff that's really relatable to what you might learn in math in high school today, combined with old-fashioned typesetting, old-fashioned, uh, uh, you know, algorithms, old-fashioned word problems, which I'm definitely down for. How do you take the logarithm of the product of a, b? You add the logarithms of the factors, so log a plus log b. Number two would be log a minus log b. And number three would be three log a. And then you've got a bunch of stuff that I don't know if the book has a table in the back, but a lot of these books would. Okay, logarithms. Arithmetical progressions. I hate this typesetting so bad. It's confusing. I don't know. I feel like it is. The first term is 4, the difference 1, the number of terms 100. And he's trying to make it systematic, but still. Geometrical progressions, the same thing. Okay, what are we seeing? Lots of curly braces, that's what we're seeing. Okay, problems for simple equations with one unknown quantity. So in other words, word problems, this is where I like to go. The problems belonging to this section are so arranged that the pupils may also solve them in their heads by a simple process of reasoning, if you say so. If I had a hundred more than I have, I should be able to pay all my debts. How much money do I need? A hundred dollars? I'm not sure what that's actually asking. Three times as much money as I have would amount to $24. How much money have I? Eight dollars. Okay. A and B were talking of a certain sum of money. A said I have three times as much, upon which B replied, Well, then I have exactly four times as much as you. Both together had 750. What sum are they talking of? <laughs> this, is, this is definitely the highly contrived word problem thing. Uh, it reminds me of that meme I saw recently about the, the would you recommend Windows 10 to your friends? And the person said, you know, I am on a scale of 1 to 10, like 1 or 0 or whatever was lowest. You know, regular people do not have conversations about which operating system to use. <laughs> I feel that way about these problems. Like, A and B were talking of a certain sum of money. Like, why were they talking of a certain sum of money? Like, do pe regular people just walk around, you know what I'm thinking about? Fifteen dollars. Like, people think about money in terms of what they want to buy, or like how they're going to get some. <laughs> it's like, I'm thinking about dollars right now, 15 of them specifically. Anyway, a gamester lost in the first game, a third in the second, what is that, a fourth, and in the third, a fifth of all the money he had with him, 
upon counting, he finds he has but $13 left. How much money had he at first? I don't know. I am not going to try to solve these in my head right now. Two gentlemen wish to buy a horse. Oh, gay representation in 1833. I don't know. That's <laughs> probably not it. Upon counting their money, they found that one had but a seventh and the other only a ninth. Yes, of the whole money that was asked for him. And yet they had together $32. What was the price of the horse? This is the, the same thing like earlier. This is the exact backwards way from how real things work, right? In reality, you know how much the horse costs. You have to figure out like what fraction of the money you have based on what you have. Like, you know, hello, we have $32. The horse costs however much it costs you know, $250 or something, and then what fraction of that do we have? That's how it really works, and this is reversing it for the sake of the problem. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, number nine's the same way. In reality, you know how much money you have. Oh, what's he buying? Sugar, coffee, rice, tea, and cigars. <laughs> Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. This watchman is going to get court-martialed. A watchman being asked the hour of the night answered, One half, one third, and a quarter of it is just one hour more than the present time. Yo, no, don't do that if you're on watch. These are... They're funny because they're so contrived. And I guess it's the same way now. I feel like it's gotten better recently, but maybe not a lot. I've been out of school for... Oh, goodness, how long have I been out of school? 20 years and more out of, like, high school. Um, okay... From a basket of apples, I gave a number of children four apiece, but finding that in this way I had 44 apples left, I took them all back <laughs> and gave them six apples apiece, upon which I had but 12 left. How many children were there and how many apples had I at first? That one's actually not bad, because you might not know. you got a basket of apples. You might not know how many are in there. That's actually approaching realism somewhat. It's in the same town. Okay... A gentleman came into a store and demanded of a certain commodity. The merchant told him that, at that moment, he had not the precise article the gentleman called for, but two other sorts, of which one was only three-fourths and the other seven-eighths of the price the gentleman named, and that these sorts differed from each other ten dollars per... Something. I should know what that abbreviation means, but I don't. What is the price per unit or whatever that means? Or weight? It must be some sort of weight. I'll look that up at some point. Oh no. Oh, look, number six breaks the fourth wall. A traveler inquired how far he had to go to the next town, but as he addressed himself to a, a young algebraist, received the following answer. If you add three-fourths and five-eighths of the number of miles you have yet to walk to that number itself, and yet one quarter mile more, the answer will be five miles. How far was he from the next town? So this is how you get beaten up in the street. <laughs> mm. How much money did you win? asked one gambler of another. Very li little indeed, answered he, for I ought to have won three times, one half, one quarter, and one fifth as much, and one dollar more, in order to be able to pay the hundred dollars which I owe you. How much did he win? Wow. Okay. I'm bookmarking that page. 
for later. Probably post that on Twitter and make some sort of sarcastic comment. <clears throat> Ooh, capitalists. Two capitalists calculate their fortunes, and it appears that one is twice as rich as the other, and that together they possess $5,400. 1833, y'all. What is the capital of each? Ah, jaunty maritime problems are always fun. A merchant freighted a vessel of 260 tons with sugar and coffee and tea. He put twice as much coffee on board as tea and three and a half times as much sugar as coffee. How much tons, how many tons did she carry of each commodity? Actually, this one's kind of dark when you think about it because, um, 1833, this was during the time when, uh, people were enslaved in North America and the Caribbean, so... That sugar was probably harvested by enslaved Africans, so not nice. That's, that's the other thing about these old books. Like, they get really dark sometimes because of that exact issue. Like, there's a lot of drinking in them, first of all. And, and stuff like this where, oh, let's deal with tea and coffee. And it's like it's the height of the British Empire and North American slavery. So, okay. What else? So anyway, this one's got some good stuff in it, some sort of interesting things. Goodness, this guy doubling his capital every year. So it's, it's a geometric series problem. It's just, it's contrived a little bit. Wait, hold on. A, a man promises to walk 50 miles on condition that he was to walk but three quarters of a mile in an hour, how many hours would he need? First of all, that's really slow. This is one of those ones with a backstory, like why in the world is this even happening? I think I downloaded this book because it's the one with the Gentleman fond of cider question. That's a work problem. The basin. I like how they spell basin. Hmm. Let me see if I can... Oh, historical question. At the Battle of Leipzig, 200,000 Germans, Russians, and English opposed Napoleon's army, which was then composed only of 100,000 troops. During the engagement, a number of Württembergians and Saxons that were in Napoleon's army deserted his cause and went over to the enemy, by which means he had exactly two and, what, three quarters times his own number to contend with. How many <laughs> Württembergians and Saxons went over to the enemy? Okay, I'm bookmarking that one too, because I like that one. Wait. This is... Th okay, so when the algebra book teaches you how to make gunpowder... Wow, okay. Leaving out the charcoal. Okay, I'll sort of... See, any book with word problems in it from this period of time never fails to have colorful stuff. Why is he carrying so much of his property in two bags? In the one I have a quarter, and in the other three-eighths of my property, how much have I in each bag? I feel like, what's going on there? Mm. 
In the following problems, no regularity has been preserved in order to prevent the pupil from forming mechanical habits. Promiscuous problems. Nice. All right. I guess it's just you have to fill in some of the numbers yourself. Yeah, this is so colorful. Something with Alexander the Great. This actually has good stuff. This poor guy having eggs stolen from him, then breaking them. Oh, where's the Gentleman Fund of Cider? Pro I think it's in this book, but I've talked about the Gentleman Fund of Cider problem before. Here's a lot of those drunk problems. It's like buying wine, a dog chasing a hare. It's so colorful. I love it. Bombardiers thro throwing shells from a battery. Several children in a family. This one's weird. A person possesses a wagon with a mechanical contrivance by which the difference of a number of of the number of revolutions of the wheels on a journey may be determined. Okay. Ah, more mixing saltpeter and sulfur together. Raffling off a watch. Oh boy. More eggs to market. Okay, I think I've either missed it or I'm not here yet. Ooh, a, a filling up with pipes problem. A person has a number of dollars which he wishes to arrange in the form of a square. At the first trial, he has $130 over, but when he enlarged the side of the square by $3, there only <laughs> remained 31. How many dollars had he? Yes, it says this problem is similar to the preceding one, and number 163 is what I'm used to seeing this as, a general just like trying to arrange his troops in certain ways. I wouldn't want to be the troops. That must be irritating. Okay, we're forming up in a big square. Oh, we don't have enough people. Let's uh, form up in a different square. Wait, is it that? Because that's usually what happens. Like, they try. Okay, it's the other way around. This time he, he arranges it too small and he has a bunch of people left over and then he makes it bigger and now he doesn't have enough. It can go either way, of course. Oh, let me see. I'm just going to scroll fast here. Okay, conversions. French and English miles. Barrels. Wine. The crown of King Hiero of Syracuse. Okay, what else do we have? Coffee, sugar, and tea again. Okay, problems which lead to quadratic equations. This has been nice. Okay, so I will end the video now. Hopefully that was sort of interesting and kind of amusing and sort of a look back in time at the algebra of the 1830s. Take care now and have a good one.